What's up, my brothers and sisters? I am Jay Campbell. And I'm Hunter Williams. And we are back today to talk about a topic that we get a lot of questions about, right? And that is, when is it too young to start therapeutic testosterone, aka TRT, aka TOT, which is, again, testosterone optimization therapy? Uh, and it's it's not an easy answer because as much as you and I want to jump out and say, oh, you can start men on testosterone in the early 20s, legally it's harder for physicians to prescribe therapeutic testosterone to younger men because of the state medical licensing boards and the way they audit, you know, patient records and files. And obviously you know better than anybody that like when you first start off with this and you're a man in your late twenties and you're suffering from a testosterone deficiency. And of course, Hunter was due to all the hits he took playing division one ACC football at Wake Forest as a linebacker, crushing people and also getting crushed. And so he had, you know, what was known as like a TBI or uh, you know, concussive brain injury or whatever. And so he was off balance. He was also obviously a very, uh, you know, hard competitive athlete. He had just competed in a bodybuilding show as a natural. And so obviously he took his endocrine system that really much down to the bottom. So at 27 or what was it? 26 yeah, 27, or 27 when yeah. he had, uh, you know, a really severe case of uh, class two or type two hypogonadism, he was, you know, met with the exact same barriers of entry and resistance of like, oh, you're a young guy. I got to start you first on HCG or clomiphene or whatever it was you as HCG. Was it a clomiphene or HCG? Uh, clomiphene. clomiphene yeah. yeah. And, and, and again, most guys that when they're young and they're starting off on clomiphene or again, HCG uh, or in clomiphene, um, you know, they experience a rise in their lab values, right? Like over four to six weeks, they see a value a increase in their total testosterone levels and sometimes free, but very nominally. Um, but on paper, it's supposedly working, right? But you could comment right now, you don't feel the same way on those uh, yeah. drugs that you do with therapeutic testosterone. Yeah, I think for most of those drugs, clomiphene, HCG, there's a ton of other ones out there that people can use. They're more of just a bridge. And again, those are fertility medications. Yeah. Most of the time, that's what they were developed for is fertility. And if you're suffering from testosterone deficiency, that's usually the least of your worries because there's a lot of other problems going on in your life if you have a deficiency. So the question is how young is too young? It's really hard to answer. I will say this though. We know that the world is being, call it transmogrified yeah. to have lower testosterone. So as that continues to happen over the next few years and the following decades, we're likely going to see lots of men that are confused they don't have the same discipline. They don't have the same uh, assertiveness and drive that they may have once had. And most likely that will come from a deficiency. So the question is going to be, how young can men start on testosterone now? Because Jay and I have seen kids in their teens that get their blood work done and they have subclinical subpar testosterone, you know, in the 80s, 90s, even 100s, uh, you know, when a regular teenager should have a thousand total testosterone. So there's no cookie cutter answer. However, I will say most of the time, people would be concerned about starting testosterone at a young age, like I did when I was 27, because they're worried about fertility. Yeah. And one of the myths around testosterone is that if you start too young, that you're going to wipe out your fertility and you're never going to be able to have kids. Well, I don't have kids yet, but I will say a lot of the fears around the fertility idea are overblown. So if I'm a 23 or 24 year old, and for myself, I was 27 when I started, if I'm looking at what are the pros and cons of starting testosterone in my 20s, you know, I'm going to say, okay, for me, this is what I did. I kind of sat down. I was like, for me, the pros are I'm going to feel better. I'm going to be more metabolically healthy. I'm going to be more cardiovascularly healthy. I'm going to have more drive, assertiveness, and discipline. And I'm going to have a better mood and better cognition and less brain fog and less anxiety. What are the cons? I could potentially impair my fertility. I don't think that there's any other con other than that when you're <laughs> in your 20s. So uh, I would say, you know, okay, if that's one of the issues, I've got to do a risk reward analysis of that. And for me, that was worth it. Now that might be different for you, but I will say this, all of the things in the environment that we have today, obviously fertility is a huge problem, regardless of whether or not someone's using therapeutic testosterone or not. So for me, that was like the only negative that I saw starting it at a young age that you could possibly impair your fertility. But having studied under Jay, having learned all the things from the amazing doctors that we, you know, have relationships with and talk to and everything. I understand that there's a protocol that I can go under when that time arises that I need to be fertile. Um, and, you know, I would argue, you know, 
Testosterone is a very ineffective contraceptive, yeah, as they say. Right. There are plenty of people that use therapeutic testosterone and are not trying to get pregnant. They end up getting pregnant. So um, I think a lot of the fears around that are overblown. And again, that's you know most people's concern starting at a young age. Because other than that, when we introduce it at a therapeutic level, there's really no downside. You know, I wouldn't say start at you know at 16 or 17 years old, um, but when you're looking at someone in their 20s, if they're suffering from a clinical deficiency, this is not popular. You're not going to hear doctors talk about this, but I think this is something that can radically transform and change a man's life for the better, especially at a crucial age um, where he's kind of at an impasse of. Uh, the life decisions that he's going to make and end up, uh, you know, following suit from like the choices he makes in his twenties are going to lead him to what kind of life he has in his thirties and forties and eventually have a family and stuff. So um, for me, it was worth it. It absolutely changed my life for the better. Um, everyone kind of has to evaluate that with where you are, but I would say, you know, you're going to hear a lot of information on the internet about when you're younger, stay away from testosterone. And yeah, we can talk about like diet and exercise and stuff, I would say before anyone starts that, they need to have all of those things in check, your diet, your exercise, your lifestyle, your sleep, your mineral intake, your electrolyte intake, all those different things are very crucial um, to living a healthy life. But I'm just of the camp that the world is so contaminated now. Yeah. Testosterone can be the most powerful thing in helping a man become the highest realized version of himself. So I, he just nailed it. There's nothing else for me to add. Other than that, if you have a progressive doctor who knows what they're doing, and obviously there's very there's a very small number of those yeah. people, but if you are happen to be working with one of the doctors that we work with, and you've checked all the boxes, and uh, you know you're in your late twenties or your early thirties, and you code to them and you bring them our information, perhaps this video, and you say, "Look, I understand the risks and rewards. Uh, I want to get on testosterone, but keep my fertility." then that's how you do it, right? You start a person on therapeutic testosterone and you give them a low dose of HCG or enclomiphene at the same time to maintain uh, follicle stimulating hormone and of course, luteinizing hormone again to maintain uh, modal sperm. And, and look, if you're one of those people and you're really smart, <coughs> hopefully you also have resources. Um, you're somewhat well to do. Get a measured sperm count done before yep. you go on therapeutic testosterone. Yep. That way they freeze your sperm. And no matter what happens, and again, the risk, as you already said, is very minimal. I mean, yeah. very rarely does therapeutic testosterone make a person fertile. But just in case you're one of those outliers, now you have your sperm. You can use it later in life to do in vitro or whatever else. So it's that simple. Um, but the truth is, as you said it, you're going to go down the path that most people do, which is the path of least resistance, which is they're going to start you on HCG or enclomiphene, and then they're going to progress you. And then eventually, if you don't feel better and you don't get to the point of like what most people feel, you know, amazing and optimized on therapeutic testosterone, then they'll eventually put you on. But again, do your homework, do your research, take this video, take this knowledge, take this awareness to that doctor and say, Hey, look, I'd rather start on therapeutic testosterone along with uh, a, you know, a small dose of enclomiphene or HCG. So I think that summarizes this entire video. I'm Jay Campbell. I'm Hunter Williams. We'll see you guys very soon. Peace.